know that Canadians were shocked to hear that Target is pulling out of Canada. Many of you said, but your shelves have been so empty that I thought you'd closed down months ago. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 successful American businesses that failed overseas. The House of Barbie was consciously designed to make its namesake a hit with children and adults. Chinese women have no nostalgic history with Barbie, and most still don't recognize her. For this list, we'll be looking at major U.S.-based companies that have tried and spectacularly failed to find success in certain other countries. We're using the term overseas a bit loosely since the actual definition of the word states that the country or countries involved don't necessarily have to be across a body of water, though they usually are. But they do have to be foreign, as in not American. Have you ever been to a major U.S. retailer overseas? Tell us all about it in the comments. Number 10. Target, Canada Target is closing all 133 of its stores in Canada. But the news doesn't come as a surprise to analysts and customers that have been tracking the company's expansion. In 2011, it was announced that U.S. retailer Target was entering the Canadian market in an unusual way. By acquiring the leases of 220 Zeller stores, they effectively converted most of them to Target locations by 2013. Saddened by the loss of a classic Canadian brand, shoppers were excited to see how Target would compare to both the old Zellers and current Walmart offerings. But it only took two years for the brand to tank in a spectacular fashion. Stores were poorly stocked and Canadians were turned off when they noticed that prices fluctuated from what they were used to seeing at Target's U.S. stores. A combination of supply chain issues, technology difficulties, and a simple lack of understanding of the Canadian market proved the U.S. chain's shot in Canada was far from the bullseye. They built stores everywhere and they took existing stores and they made them into This was one, I, this we'll, we'll look back and we'll look at, this is the biggest blunder in the history of retail. Number nine, Walmart, Germany. Can a company help you live a better life? We're working on it every day. One of the biggest reasons why U.S.-based chains struggle or die entirely in foreign markets has to do with cultural differences. In some cases, corporations may simply assume that what works in one place will work everywhere. We're able to get toys, treats, stuff that the kids like, and be able to say yes, it just really puts a smile on our face. And that's why at Walmart. A prime example of this was the failure for Walmart to take off in Germany. Opening in 1997, the chain lasted nine years and took a billion dollar loss on the venture. Explanations vary, but a common thread among many of them is how German people are distinctly different from the U.S. standard Walmart business practices, like plastic bags, door greeters, and even pre-store opening chants all clashed with the locals. Walmart also required its cashiers to flash smiles at patrons, which a lot of customers thought was flirty and creepy. Number 8. Wendy's, Japan Welcome to Wendy's. Like with your hot and crispy fries. Introducing Wendy's new fries, guaranteed hot and crispy. Having expanded to Japan in 1980, Wendy's managed to keep Dave Thomas's famous burger chain open for almost 30 years. I think I'm onto something. All 71 locations were closed at the end of 2009, leaving fans wondering if they would ever return. Heavy competition from McDonald's and Burger King seemed to be the largest reason for the withdrawal. The company did return again in 2011 with three new stores, but failed again to capture any significant market share. They ultimately decided to simply acquire the Japanese-based First Kitchen chain and rebrand it. They began offering Wendy's items alongside the store's original menu. You really can't get much for five bucks these days, unless... Is that a real song? Number 7. McDonald's Jamaica slash the Caribbean. There's very little argument to be made about McDonald's being the top burger joint across the globe. Yeah, the BTS mill and McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. As previously mentioned, the Golden Arches have been a solid competitor to many over the years. Yet even Ray Kroc would have had difficulty keeping the franchise afloat out in the Caribbean. The Jamaican chain lasted 10 years and ceased operations in 2005. Several major barricades prevented the brand from really taking off. The high cost of launching and maintaining a franchise limited how many locations would open. 
Combine that with supply chain issues, a bad economy, and a misunderstanding around the locals' approach to cuisine all contributed to the burger giant's failure. Locations in Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago also suffered the same fate. Still my fries, my fries, still my fries. Go on, steal my fries. Number six, eBay, China. Sell it on eBay, make someone's day. Buy a thing, sell a thing is what you should do. Like a boomerang, the love comes back to you. This may be the first entry regarding China, but it certainly won't be the last. Another difficult market to crack, eBay never stood a chance against Taobao, a subsidiary of Alibaba. Literally means searching for treasures in Chinese. It's China's biggest online shopping destination, with more than 2 billion listings of products and services. Launched in 2003 as an eBay competitor, Taobao understood the Chinese market far better than its U.S. counterpart. eBay charged for listings, whereas Taobao's were free. Perhaps the most significant difference, though, was the ability for customers to instant message directly with sellers on the Taobao platform. Shopping on Taobao is never a chore or a task. It's a fun, interactive, entertaining journey that keeps Chinese consumers spending nearly 30 minutes every day on the platform. This real-time communication gave buyers a more intimate relationship with the seller, something eBay couldn't offer and was important to the locals. The company pulled out in 2006. Number 5. Mattel, China The Chinese girls embrace Barbie's pink kingdom, an American mainstay could find new life in China. Mattel learned the hard way what many of the companies on this list also learned. Study your foreign market in explicit detail. However, with its iconic brand Barbie, Mattel hopes to gain significant market share in China, where it has long lagged behind rivals such as Japanese toy maker Bandai. Anyone and everyone in the U.S. knows who Barbie is. So when Mattel went to Shanghai and built a six-floor, 36,000-square-foot facility featuring Barbie in every corner, they expected massive success. The six-floor dream house features every Barbie ever made, including her new Shanghai friend Lin, complete with multiple shopping bags. Only one problem. Chinese culture tends to favor educational entertainment versus escapism. Shoppers didn't know of or even understand what the point of Barbie was, and so no one was interested. It only took two years before the store closed its doors. Number 4. Starbucks, Australia After 50 years, we've learned that possible is just the beginning. Similar to an earlier entry about Target, Starbucks tried a massive launch to a market they'd done very little research on. Opening 84 locations across the country, locals saw the emergence of the coffee chain as an attempted invasion. When they launched, they launched too rapidly and didn't give the Australian consumer an opportunity to really develop an appetite for the Starbucks brand. In a land where coffee was already in abundance, Starbucks faced an upward battle against a surprising adversary, the locals. Turns out those from down under tend to favor independent cafes versus giant conglomerates. In a region that loves the uniqueness of individual coffee houses, the Seattle-based company stood out for all the wrong reasons. It just was the complete wrong market for what, what the Australian was used to. Struggling to find their niche, they sold whatever they had left to 7-Eleven's owners, who now sell their brand in convenience stores. Number 3. Best Buy the United Kingdom. Based on everything you've heard on this list so far, we'll give you one guess why Best Buy failed in the UK. Yep, you got it. Culture. People had no clue what was Best Buy here, so why would you go to a big store that just opened when you can go to your Curry's or PC World you've been going for years? They had hoped to open upwards of 200 stores after acquiring a 50% stake in Carphone Warehouse, a UK wireless carrier. They never even made it past 11 stores, failing to understand how Europeans approach purchasing of electronics. Best Buy assumed they were just like folks back home. Not so much. People across the pond tend to either buy online or through smaller retailers. People in the UK, um, they, they're much more likely to research online and buy online that actually the role of the store is quite insignificant. Combine that with poor timing of their launch and a lack of advertising, 
Best Buy never stood a chance. Best Buy closed its 11 big box stores in the UK in 2012, just two years after initially entering the country. A very brief attempt. Number two, Uber, China. All you have to do to find it is get out here. Much like the other entries on this list that tried to get into China, Uber failed to crack the safe of their great firewall. 2016 saw them raise the white flag when they were absorbed by their biggest competitor, Didi. Uber's failure was not for a lack of trying. The company invested heavily in the use of Chinese infrastructure to meet the demands of the market. But from unethical drivers, lacking relationships with taxi companies, and regulatory difficulties, Uber failed to gain any traction. Had they tried to partner with the right company, even their competitor, they may have had a chance. Instead, if you need a ride in China, you're best off to try Didi. Uber was behind from day one. If a Chinese user already had Didi, the only reason they'd switch is if it was that much cheaper. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Google. China. Billions of people around the world use Google, except in China. Even the king of search couldn't find a way to make it work in China. Google tried entering the market there in 2006, but very quickly learned it was no match for their biggest competitor, Baidu. Formed in 2000, it had one edge on Google they were never going to go near, pirated content. With the ability to easily access music and movie downloads, Baidu created a stronghold Google couldn't breach. Then along came the Great Firewall, and they became even more frustrated with the rules around censorship. By 2010, Google had begun discontinuing their services. Since its departure, Chinese consumers have learned to live without Google. Although not available in mainland China now, Google does continue to operate a presence there through Google Hong Kong. What are the chances that Google Search will ever come back to China? Or that Google Cloud would ever come to China? You know, today we don't provide most of our signed-in services in China, and I don't see that changing. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.